Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay, welcome back. Uh, yesterday, uh, we were discussing the, the stereoelectronic parameters for uh, SN2 uh, reactions and vis-a-vis -vis SN1 reactions. We have seen that in SN2 reactions, the nucleophile should approach uh, in a linear fashion to the Cx axis, x being the living group and it should come from the back side. Okay. The reason for that, uh, that it gives the maximum possible stable transition state because the overlap when it comes from the back side the overlap of the orbitals of the incoming nucleophile incoming nucleophile and the orbital that the carbon is having uh, that gives the maximum overlap when it approaches along the c x axis okay then we so basically in sn2 reactions there will be inversion which is called Walden inversion, inversion of configuration. Again, I repeat, this inversion does not mean R going to S or S going to R. That may happen, that may not happen, or it does not mean also plus going to minus rotation or minus rotation going to plus rotation. That may happen, that may not happen. It all depends on the nature of substituents and the priority of the substituents. Okay. So, uh, we have seen that there are cases which go by SN2 reactions, uh, SN2 reactions there are uh, there are cases where double inversion can occur, double inversion means double SN2 reactions can occur okay. and these uh, are called these are uh, these take place when there is anchimeric assistance from the from the neighboring nucleophile within the molecule. So, intramolecular it is an intramolecular attack by a neighboring nucleophile. So, one example we have seen is the case of hydrolysis of alpha uh, alpha bromo or 2 bromo propionate. Okay. 2 bromo propionate we have seen that the carboxylate in dilute sodium hydroxide uh, the carboxylate is formed and the OH minus being less in number. So, the before the OH minus attacks this carbon from the back side it is the carboxylate which attacks from the back side and the BR leaves. So, that is one inversion and then the OH minus comes and opens up the alpha lactone. This is a very strained molecule. So, it also wants to open up and that is assisted the opening is assisted by the uh, nucleophilic attack by OH minus from the back side of this CO bond. So, basically another inversion takes place. So, there are two SN2 reactions and the overall uh, it leads to retention of configuration. What is this retention? That means, the BR was occupying a place uh, which now the OH minus is placed, the OH is placed. Okay. So, that is retention of configuration. Now, we have also seen that um, we have to be careful uh, that always neighboring group participation uh, does not lead to uh, retention of configuration. It will lead to the retention of configuration provided the center that is the neighboring group is attacking is also attacked by the nucleophile. If the incoming nucleophile attacks another carbon like this sulfur compound, if it attacks here then there will be inversion of configuration at this center. Now, the OH minus can attack this carbon or that carbon. So, if it attacks this carbon then this bond will break, but the inversion will still be retained. So, in that case it is the inverted product that is obtained. On the other hand if OH minus attacks at this carbon and breaks the carbon sulfur bond then it is the retention of configuration. So, you have to be careful which center the nucleophile is attacking. Is it the same center as the internal nucleophile is attacking or it is the other center and depending on that whether inversion will take place or not that will be decided. Okay. Now, uh, this is one example of a cyclohexane system, cyclohexane system where uh, this type of this type of anchimeric assistance can take place this is sodium acetate, this is a reaction of uh, see so you start with cyclohexane 1 to diol trans and one of the oxygen is protected as the acetate 
and the other is converted to a brosyl group ok, uh, to a brosyl ok, ortho that is para bromo sulfonyl that is the, the brosyl group and then sodium acetate now in theory sodium acetate should approach from the top side and do an SN2 reaction to the to to uh, force this to go out and the acetate should have been beta, but you see the product the product is here the acetate retains its configuration whatever was there and this acetate uh, also uh, retains the same configuration as the brosylate had ok. So, it is also now alpha and the mechanism of this is um, I can write it down the mechanism is given here see you have to um, if you write in this the cyclohexane form. So, what happens here this is the beta O C O C H 3 and this was the alpha that is the brosyl group. So, initially this is what is going to happen. So, this attacks as an internal nucleophile. So, so that comes from the top side and if it comes from the top side. So, the pro this there will be an intermediate which will be. So, this will be also beta because it is from the opposite side the back side it should attack and there will be C H 3 and this is plus. Now, this will be a resonance hybrid of these two of these two. Now, what happens the acetate which comes the O A C minus that will come from the back side and this opens up like this. So, you get the retention of acetate here and this O A C comes from the alpha side ok. So, that is the mechanism of the reaction. You can also think of that the because there is no distinction between these two oxygens here if you write the other resonance structure. So, you have O then C then here it is the O plus this is C H 3. Now, if the acetate attacks the other carbon because there is no distinction between these two carbons. So, it can attack here that goes there that go there ok. Remember this is beta. So, now you have the same situation O A C and O A C they are trans to each other since this is C 2 symmetric molecule these two molecules are same ok. So, it is not that it is attacking only the carbon where the brosyl group is there it can also attack the other carbon and this is the mechanism. So, basically it is a uh, anchimeric assistant from the acetate first to kick out the brosite. So, that is one inversion and then it decides to attack from the back side. So, that is the further inversion. So, that gives it a, a retention ok. So, ultimately the result is that the two acetate groups are trans to each other ok, 100 percent trans. Another example is this amino acid, you know amino acids the primary amines can be uh, converted to the diazo and then that can be replaced by OH ok. So, if you take a primary amine and uh, if you treat with HNO2, so one of the product is ROH. Now, in this case um, if you do the same reaction with an amino acid. So, basically you can think of that this is becoming OH and this carboxy and OH now form a lactone. So, the product is a gamma lactone ok. So, basically the reaction is virtually the same this is replaced by OH, but since this is hydroxy and acid and carboxylic acid are together and this is an acidic medium. So, there will be acid catalyzed. Uh, esterification you, you can think in that fashion ok. Actually the mechanism is not like that that this is just replaced by uh, OH coming from the back side OH means OH from water ok. Because if you look at the configuration this is S and the product that is also S that means there is retention of configuration that means this oxygen has not come from the water from the back side because then it, it would have been R. So, it is coming from the from uh, obviously, this oxygen is taking the place of the 
nitrogen. So, what is the mechanism of this reaction that is given here? So, first there is this that means, uh, here it is retention of configuration although there is S n 2 attack. Uh, if the O H attacks in an S n 2 fashion and directly kicks out the N H 2, then it would have been uh, you have to rotate it. So, and then change the con uh, then oxygen will come I can show it um, here in the board then the carboxy oxygen should come. So, there are two possibilities. Uh, so, one is that you have this this is by the way is a is an amino acid called glutamic acid. So, you have N H 2 you have N H 2 on this side okay. and then you have carboxy the beta carboxy and you have alpha hydrogen. Now, there are two possibilities first of all if H N O 2 comes. So, that will be converted to the to the diazo the amine will first convert it to the diazo. Then remember this is S configuration. Okay. So, this is CO 2 H that is H. Now, if this has to kick out this nitrogen this is the living group the N 2 plus. So, this has to rotate and then oxygen will attack and the nitrogen will go out, but if that happens then this will be converted to the R configuration because you are already rotating it and then the oxygen comes and so if you rotate the carboxy will go to the back position and the hydrogen will come to the front position. So, that will create an R configuration. However, the configuration still remains S. So, what happens there is neighboring group participation. Now, you come back to the slide there is neighboring group participation this oxygen the carbox is very similar to the that alpha bromopropionate case. Now, this oxygen at acts as a nucleophile and attacks this nit carbon and the nitrogen goes off. So, that forms an alpha lactone in this case you can write O H plus because it is not the basic medium it is acidic medium. So, the plus charge is still on the oxygen uh, and then the lactonization uh, this is alpha lactone replaced by a gamma lactone because that is more stable. So, this is lost and that acts as a nucleophile attacks the carbon and this carbon oxygen bond is broken. So, if that is the case then you get what is called the you get the same uh, the uh, what was the amine occupying uh, the position now this oxygen occupying the same position uh, as the amine. So, this uh, goes to the to the S configuration. So, in between it has been converted into the R configuration because now this oxygen is has replaced in the intermediate the oxygen has done an ascent to attack onto the azide okay, onto the sorry onto the diazo and uh, that forms the alpha lactone, but the configuration has changed in that uh, in that attack because now the most the priority the highest priority group is here on the right side here the highest priority group is on the left side. Okay. So, the there is a change in configuration R and that goes to S. Okay. So, these are some of the examples of as in uh, that intramolecular uh, reactions intramolecular cases where there is neighboring group participation. Okay. Now, let us come to the uh, stereoelectronic requirement for E 2 elimination. Okay. Now, in E 2 elimination what happens? E 2 elimination is is that the if it is a elimination involving say dehydrohalogenation. So, you have system like this. Okay. C 2 elimination is the base attacks the takes the hydrogen if it is dehydrohalogenation then this is the mechanism. Now, what is the stereoelectronic stereoelectronic requirement for this process that is what we are considering now. Now, there are two possible ways you can you can write this that either it could be a syn type system orientation or it could be an anti type orientation between the C x and the C h uh, that means, the two living groups because here hydrogen is lost x is lost. So, the two living groups can be anti to each other or they could be syn to each other and uh, but the most important thing is that they should be periplanar means this plane 
the plane containing these bonds and the plane containing this uh, plane containing this hydro actually I should make it only single and this is the uh, this is the uh, beta bond. Okay. So, this C H and this C X should be periplanar. So, also this C H and C X has to be periplanar because if they are not periplanar then what happens there will be uh, problem with overlap of the p orbitals that are being generated here because ultimately there is a double one. So, p orbitals are generated if they are not in the same plane then there cannot be overlap between them. So, for efficient overlap they have to be seen. Okay. Now, let us uh, show this the bonds to be uh, to the to be eliminated or the the eliminated groups h and x must be in the same plane that is number 1. Now, same plane means two types one is this eclipsed conformation h and x are seen to each other or other could be the anti periplanar. So, one could be seen periplanar that means, seen configuration as well as periplanar and the other could be anti periplanar h and x are in the same same planar system, but they are now anti a staggered conformation. So, these two are possibilities. So, what happens in elimination the normal process involves the anti elimination is favored over the scene elimination. There are cases where scene elimination takes place, but that is through a different kind of mechanism when six member transition states are involved then it could be uh, a scene elimination, but otherwise if there is disjointed that a base comes and attacks. Uh, takes up the hydrogen and the x leaves then it is always the anti type of elimination that takes place. Okay. Uh, now, the reason for anti elimination is that uh, there could be several reasons one is achha, this is the scene elimination and there is the front side attack that means, the base is coming from the same side as the both the groups the, the same side of the groups that are being eliminated. So, h and x are facing the same side and the base is coming from the same side. So, you can expect repulsion because base is after all a negatively charged uh, system it is it could be a nucleophile uh, it could be an anionic species or it could be uh, a species containing lone pair of electrons. Okay. We are talking about Lewis base and then there will be repulsion with the because as x is coming as coming out as x minus. So, there will be repulsion to the approach of the base. Uh, so, that so that may disfavor this front side attack or the scene elimination. On the other hand in anti elimination you do not face that problem because the x is on the other side on the anti side. Okay. So, the that is one uh, one uh, aspect anti elimination avoids repulsion of the electron rich base with the living group that means, the x and the other uh, more important thing is that anti elimination the best overlap of the interacting orbitals is achieved through back side attack the best overlap is achieved through back side attack. Actually what happens you can think in this way that when uh, this h is lost. So, basically you are generating an anion here and the anti bonding orbital of this C x is empty on this side and this anion can now can overlap means this anion means this is occupying another uh, when the hydrogen is lost. So, this is occupying a semi p orbital. So, there will be a, a very good overlap between the anti bonding orbital of this and the anion that is being created. So, that will stabilize the whole system. So, that is why it is coming from the back side. If it comes from the front side then the anti bonding orbital portion will be on this side whereas, the anion is created in the front side. So, this will be back side that will be on the front side. So, there will not be efficient overlap if it happens in the sin direction. I hope this is clear this is very similar to your S n 2 that is in S n 2 the back side attacks takes place because the back side has anti bonding empty orbital and this is the nucleophile. So, the nucleophile orbital now that is filled up with electrons. So, that can efficiently overlap with the sigma star. So, it is very similar now instead of the nucleophile you have a negative charge and the negative is placed on the front side front means upside and here. Uh, the upside you have the anti bonding orbital. So, there will be efficient uh, overlap between these two in this case it is not possible. So, now we know that in E 2 elimination. Uh, so, we are convinced that E 2 elimination is mostly taking place uh, when the two groups are anti periplanar. So, the stereo electronic requirement for E 2 elimination uh, is that uh, 
the groups which are departing should be anti periplanar. Okay. So, that is the important fact. Now, let us uh, take few cases I think I uh, discussed about this there, uh, there are this is actually C H 3 C H uh, C H 3 C H B R then you have C H 2 then C H 2 C H 3. So, C H 3 you have what you have C H 3 then C H B R then C H 2 then C H 2 then C H 3. So, if it undergoes elimination, so there are two types of elimination possible, but let us consider the ZF elimination that is the more substituted double bond. So, this hydrogens one of these two hydrogens will be will be eliminated, but while doing so you are creating a cis and trans double bond. Okay. Now, in order to form the first of all the, to eliminate the hydrogen and bromine should be anti to each other. So, in one conformation you have done the hydrogen bromine anti and while doing so you have put the methyl and the ethyl group methyl and the ethyl group. So, this is the methyl and this is the ethyl the methyl and the ethyl group the methyl and the ethyl group anti to each other the methyl uh, okay. Now, this uh, but you can draw another conformation in which the hydrogen and bromine are again in the anti position by doing a 120 degree rotation. So, if you do a 120 degree rotation methyl will come here this hydrogen uh, this hydrogen will come here and this hydrogen will go there, but still you have an anti periplanar uh, relationship. Okay. But out of this we know that this is the higher energy conformer as there is uh, the steric repulsion between this ethyl and the methyl which is not present here. So, this will be uh, this will be the favored conformer and then when the elimination takes place there will be the methyl will eclipse this hydrogen and this hydrogen will be eclipsed by this ethyl. So, that is also less energetic than methyl ethyl eclipsing. So, in that case this will have a lower uh, activation energy and this will be the this will be the major product uh, that is obtained. Okay. So, here the more that means, this is the uh, here uh, although th this is the more populated conformer and the more most uh, populated conformer also giving the more stable product the, uh, or they also reacting in a faster rate and resulting in a uh, more stable product via a transition state which is more stable than the transition state which is uh, involved in this uh, elimination from this conformation. Here there will be tremendous methyl ethyl eclipsing interactions as the elimination is taking place. Okay. So, this is how you uh, you convince yourself that why this is the the major product formed in the elimination of this compound this is 2 bromo pentane. Okay. So, that is written here the alkene with the bulkiest group on opposite sides of the double bond will be formed in greater yield because it is the more stable alkene, but actually stability is not the matter. I think that is one aspect, but the more important aspect is that this is during the in the transition state less repulsion because two large groups eclipsing each other is uh, is considered to be having a much more interaction steric interaction than the interaction between a, a small hydrogen and an alkyl group. Although there are two such uh, interactions are there, but the combined interaction between methyl and hydrogen and ethyl and hydrogen is less than the combined eclipsing interaction uh, than the than the eclipsing interaction of methyl and ethyl. Okay. So, ultimately this is the uh, product that is obtained. Now, in case of cyclohexane if it is not an acyclic system in acyclic system what you do you draw the Newman projection and ultimately draw a conformation where the living groups are anti to each other anti periplanar to each other. Okay. In case of cyclohexane if you have hydrogen if you are doing a dehydro uh, halogenation then the hydrogen and X are uh, have to be eliminated from vicinal from vicinal positions and then uh, what happens the hydrogen and X should be anti periplanar in order to 
uh, in order to uh, undergo the elimination, but that makes it tells you that both the hydrogen and the x are have to be axial. Okay, one is beta axial, the other is alpha axial. Okay, or vice versa. So they have to be transdiaxial. That is what is said that the leaving group and the both the leaving groups have to be trans have to have a transdiaxial relationship. Okay. Now let us um, see whether there is um, any more problem here. Okay, we'll do some problem here. Suppose we want to eliminate this chloro uh, cyclohexane. So in the equatorial form, there will be no reaction because you don't have. A so you want to do the uh, dehydrohalogenation. So al this is alcoholic potassium hydroxide. Okay, and then in alcoholic potassium hydroxide, you know elimination takes place, but there will be no E2 elimination because uh, in this conformation, because there will be. Uh, the, you do not have a trans and you do not have any hydrogen which is anti to the chlorine okay? because the chlorine is not in an axial position. On the other hand if you do a that so if you see if you do a forcing condition if you heat it. So, this will now uh, be converted to the axial conformer. So, we have uh, seen that uh, the stereo electronic requirements of E 2 elimination in what we have said in the uh, last slide is that in a cyclohexane system the groups that are being eliminated if it is dehydrohalogenation then that has to be uh, in the diaxial position that makes it anti periplanar okay and suppose you take the chlorobenzene which will normally exist in the equatorial position if you want to do the dehydrohalogenation say with alcoholic KOH, it requires forcing condition to get into the cyclohexane. Why forcing condition? Because in this equatorial position, there is no hydrogen which is anti to this chlorine. The anti bond that is to the that is present uh, is the C C bonds, okay. but here uh, the hydrogen has to be lost. So, hydrogen has to be anti. The other way you can say the chlorine is occupying equatorial position. So, there cannot be any anti hydrogen. Okay. It has to be in the axial, it has to be in the axial position. So, there is if you force it, so then this conformation can flip and chlorine can go into the axial position, but that requires little bit of energy and then so in under forcing condition you get this diaxial arrangement. In fact, you have two hydrogens which are diaxial to this chlorine. Okay. So, that is these are the important issues uh, that you have to consider while considering the elimination of cyclohexane system. Again I repeat in case of acyclic system you have to consider uh, the best is consider a Newman projection and your hydrogen and x have to be like this and in the cyclohexane system your H and X should be occupying this type of diaxial orientation. Okay. So, uh, next we will work on the on the again some problem solving uh, session what happens in cyclohexane system uh, mainly focusing on cyclohexane system about S n 1, S n 2 and, um, and S n uh, to prime those type of reactions that were and then we will take some cyclohexanes to do the elimination reactions. That means, we will talk about conformation and reactivity in cyclohexane systems uh, with respect to substitution and elimination reaction that will be in the next lecture. Thank you.